Hey everyone, it's Anthony Ramos. Okay, so the animated short film Kapaimahu tells the story of four extraordinary beings who are both male and female spirit who bring healing powers from Tahiti to Hawaii. The short has actually just made the short list for the Oscars, fingers crossed. And today I am joined by the filmmakers Hinale Moana Wongkalu, Joe Wilson, and Dean Hamer. How are you all? Like, well, first off, congratulations on making the short list uh, for Oscars. Fingers crossed there. But um, Hinale Mona, if I may start with you, because you this is your baby. You wrote, directed. Uh, tell me, tell everyone out there that maybe hasn't seen it yet why this was an important story that you wanted to tell. This was an important story because it is just one of the many pieces, the many little did you know elements of our history that are often disregarded, ignored, or overlooked. We who grow up here in Hawaii are not taught Hawaiian history and language as a, a, a main anchor in our education system. And so when it comes to a story like Kapai Mahu that has an extra level on top of it, and that is that these four legendary healers were noted in the original manuscript that we uh, did homework on and, and we learned of their nature, we see that they are both male and female in the description of them. And what that says is several things. Um, not only is our history suppressed, but also the understanding that comes with that history. So these four mahu um, really uh, deserve their day and, and to be highlighted. So it was a critical for us to make it. Absolutely. And then uh, if I may over, go over to you, Dean, why did you want to get involved with telling this story? You know, this really started almost 10 years ago when Joe and I were making a documentary about Kina because we thought her work was especially fascinating as a teacher and a cultural person who is also Mahu herself, um, something which you wouldn't necessarily see in a teacher or a public figure in the continental USA. Um, so it actually started when we were filming Hina down in Waikiki and she started chanting to these stones and she was like, you know what these are? And of course we didn't, uh, but we learned what they were over the next 10 years and realized that they really embodied this Mahu spirit and that it would serve as an example that people who are dual spirited shouldn't just be like tolerated or even accepted, but rather actually admired because they have special skills and special talents that, um, that bring something, especially now when healing is so much needed. Yeah, so much needed. We need all the healing we can get. Um, Joe, you know, speaking on that, having you know, this been such a long process for you, um, you know, and then now to see this short film come out and be so well received, what is that like for you? You know, it's an exciting moment. I think, you know, first and foremost, as Hina said, this is a Hawaiian story to tell and she's, you know, the ideal person to tell it just because of her background. But I think what it reveals speaks to a lot of us who have grown up no matter where it was, you know, somewhere on the continent, somewhere else in the world who didn't have the benefit of seeing ourselves somewhere in history in our own communities as people who are you know have a place and are accepted so to see it speak to audiences here across the u.s around the world is an exciting moment for us and we're getting an incredible response as a result you know what do you want people to you know take away from this story because you know it's short it's eight minutes but it's so impactful and has such a strong message yet yeah, what do you want people to take away from it First of all, I'd like people to take away that here in Hawaii, we come from a culture that has a very inclusive worldview of everyone having a, a worth, everyone having value, and to be somewhere in the middle, to be mahu, mm -hmm. or as the world of the West says, LGBT, that we too have our place under the sun on the map on this little island here in the Pacific Ocean. And I would hope that it serves as a beacon for the rest of the world. Absolutely. Thank you for, for sharing that. Dean or Joe, did you want to add anything to that? 
I think what's exciting for me is that, you know, this last year, there have been so many issues and problems. One of the big ones was the discussion about monuments. We have so many monuments in the US that are dedicated to people that in retrospect are not the greatest heroes that we might've thought they were. And a lot of talk about ripping them down. There's never been a monument to trans people. There've been memorials for the many people that have been hurt and killed, but there's never been a monument to them as heroes. And here we have on Waikiki beach in the middle of what normally is 7 million tourists a year, we have a monument of that sort. And that's kind of exciting, I think. Hmm. It's so, so exciting. Joe, did, go ahead, did you, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, nothing to add, except this is, you know, an exciting beginning. There's so many more stories to tell and, and we're looking forward to opportunities to share, share such things with audiences that are ready to see them. Let's talk about the Oscars because for everyone out there, the way this process goes, there's like Oscars and they have a short list and basically it's like a, the next round of potentially getting nominated for an Oscar. Um, you know, we will find out soon. Uh, are those, you know, it, what, what are the Oscar nominations? Would it be important? I mean, is it, you know, are, are the awards and the nominations important to you all? I'll go first and just say that um, we didn't expect this film to be in consideration. It's about an old legend. It's spoken in a language that's spoken fluently by less than a hundred people in the world. It's not exactly a Disney blockbuster, I would say. Um, but when we found out that if it is nominated, it'll be the first LGBTQ film that's nominated. We were like in this category mm -hmm. uh, of animated mm -hmm. short. We were like, wow, that's amazing. And then we realized, oh, it'll also be the first Hawaiian film that's been nominated, probably in any category. So um, yeah, it was pretty exciting. It says a lot about the Oscars, but it says a lot about the film too, I think, yeah. Absolutely. Hayden, did you want to go add anything to that about the uh, potential of an Oscar nomination? Everything that I avail myself to um, is always first and foremost to uplift Hawaii, the dignity and the honor of my people, all of all of my people. And it is an incredible honor, it's very humbling to even be considered. Personally, the Oscar award doesn't need to be the feather in my cap to tell me that the work is a success. The fact that my people would find value and take pride in it is, but for the purpose of uplifting Hawaii and, and my language, my culture, yes. Um, the public face to this is that it is very welcome because that's the way that we're going to really elevate Hawaii. Absolutely. Joe, what is it like to work in that format? You know, animated short, it's very specific. What is it like to kind of, you know, work to tell important stories in that format specifically? So it was a wonderful surprise for us. We have worked traditionally in documentary, um, as Dean mentioned at the beginning, and Dean and I are, you know, partners in life and filmmaking, and we love the verite documentary style, you know, just creating a, a bond and trust with people who are ready to share their story and just kind of following and experiencing some aspects or moments in their life, like we did with Tina, a year in her life. We have incorporated elements of animation in our documentary films to help illustrate certain things. We knew it was a great form to do that. For this story in particular, it was just an amazing experience because it is a Hawaiian mo'olelo, a combination of history and legend or myth. And we couldn't have imagined a better way to elevate that concept than through animation with an artist like our animation director, Daniel Sousa, who really has such a beautiful aesthetic and understood exactly what Hina wanted to convey from a Hawaiian perspective. It was, it was magical and I think it's gonna set us in a, a, a new direction to continue using animation in these creative ways. And it's so beautiful. Um, have you thought about maybe what the next chapter or what the next project you all wanna work on could be? Um, I know where it's, when you're in one project and you someone asked about the next one, but have you ever, ever given any thought to you know, what, what might be next? 
I have. Yes. What is it? You, if you we, can you let us in on a little secret? <laughs> well, um, aside from the the current project that we've taken on, this is immediately after Kopai Mahu. It's called Kopoma Ilele, and it speaks to the tempestuous love affair of goddess Pele with the uh, half pig, half man figure known as Kamapua'a. And she calls her sister to help her get up out of his clutches. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, but that and, and so many more stories that are both history and with their element of magic and legend, um, I think we just simply have to pick from a wide array of mo'olelo that we have. And, and so I personally like to start off with the stories attributed to the name Hina. Hina is a figure that is recognized throughout the Pacific, but she's very different in those respective islands. And I'd like to bring that to the forefront first. Well, I'm here for that, that sounds amazing. Um, and before we wrap up, I want to remind everyone watching out there that for, for this film, Kapai Mahu, they can actually watch it, I think, for free right now, right? Yes, it's on YouTube, Amaletto, and it's on Vimeo. Just look for the word Kapai Mahu. There's not that many films with that title, Kapai Mahu, <laughs> and you'll find it really easily. And we'd love people to, to check it out and share it with their friends. Absolutely. The easiest way is kapaimahu.com. Paimahu.com. We'll make sure to put that in there too. Well, uh, congratulations. Thank you so much uh, for the chat. And like I said, everyone, it is available to go watch on Kapaimahu.com. We'll put that in the caption. And also, fingers crossed for the Oscar nominations when they come out later this month. So wishing you all the best. Stay safe. And until we can see each other in person, I will hopefully see you soon.